Okay, Google, stop. Okay, Google, can you turn on the lights? All right, turning on three lights. Okay, Google, good morning. Hi, Arkin. It is 12.39 p.m. Oh, no, I'm Friday late. In Toronto is 22 and partly cloudy. Today, it'll be... Welcome everyone, my name is Arkan and this is Tech Time and today we're going to be talking about the Google Home. In today's modern world, everything is coming out to be pretty much the Jetsons. So with that, um, the home is becoming smart and they're using something called IoT and everything is becoming connected to the internet. With all those things connected to the internet, you need some type of central hub where it can all kind of come together and can be controlled by. And that's where this baby comes in. This is the Google Home. Um, it's a central hub that will control all your smart devices, IoT of things, and essentially your home. There are other types of hubs. Of course, the other main competitor to the Google Home is the Amazon Echo. But we have the Google Home here and we'll go through it all, including setup and what you can do with it. Setup is very easy. Just plug in the power cord to the Google Home and then plug in the power cord to any outlet and then it will start on its own. You will need an app called Google Home to actually set everything up and control the device itself. It does come on the Android Play Store. For the Americans out there, you can't control it with your iPhone. It is in the iOS App Store for America. After you connect your Google Home to your Wi-Fi internet, which is necessary, you will be asked to not only name the device, but then for all the permissions that it needs to work. So it will need your personal information, like your location, um, connect to your personal info that you have on your Google account. So what can it exactly do? Hey Google, can you play some classical music? All right, here's a Spotify playlist called Space Themed Classical Music. Hey Google, can you play Smash Mouth? Okay, playing Smash Mouth on Spotify. Somebody. Well, in addition to those things, it can actually be the central hub for all your IoT of things. Now, not all these devices are sold by Google. They're actually sold by third parties and other big companies like uh, Philips with their lights. You have Samsung with uh, and, and LG with all their devices. You have TVs. Um, you have Chromecast that it can do as well. It can be very easy to hook it up to your Google Home if it's from Google itself or let's say Philips. But it can also be quite difficult. And if you're Canadian, not all third party devices are available to you, but there is a trick around it. And that is setting your Google Home language settings to English US. If you set it to Canadian, like I did, a lot of third party devices, for example, like Samsung's uh, Wi Fi air conditioner, won't work with it. It's not set up to work with, for whatever reason, um, the Canadian market, and it limits that by its language. So if you go to your Google Home settings, go to more settings and go to language and set it to English US, it will then be able to be compatible with a lot of third party devices. So that's a little trick. So if it doesn't work, try that and hopefully we'll after. One of the coolest things about this device is that it's learning and new features are being unlocked and opened up to you even after you buying it. And that's actually an amazing feature. For example, when I bought this originally, it didn't have the ability to make phone calls. Now, it actually does. And I'm not talking about connecting to your cell phone and making a call. I'm talking about it having its own number and being able to call anyone in North America by itself without the phone. That's pretty cool. It will show up as a private number and doesn't have the ability to take in calls yet, but that's really cool that you get a free way to call anyone in North America. That's amazing. Other abilities is that as Google increases their database and its learning algorithm and its AI, it will just be able to understand you better, learn more, and do more things. And it actually does say that. Sorry, I don't know how to help with that, but I'm always learning. To use some of the abilities of the Google Home, you do need to connect it to a third-party app, the most popular being Spotify. So you do need a Spotify account, or you can just create one when you're hooking it up, uh, connect it up. It's able to do everything that Spotify can do, and the best part is you can control it with your voice. I'm not going to go through all the abilities and apps uh, uh, it has. I'm actually going to link the Google Home website for you to see all the things it can connect to. Uh, the list of third-party applications as well as the hardware that can connect to is growing every day and you can see that there too. Some of the third-party products and apps that we get, we're actually going to make separate videos on how to connect it individually to Google Home and how to use it. So watch out for those videos. 
The ultimate goal of having an IoT or smart home is ultimately being able to control your whole home with just your voice. And this is where this baby comes in. This is gonna be the central hub of everything. And this is gonna be what allows you to control everything in your home with your voice. With this device, the future is now. Hope you like this video. We're gonna be making a lot more of them. If you have anything to add to this video, please leave a comment. We'd love to hear what you have to say. While you're down there, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. This is Tech Time with Arkan. Arkan signing off. Google, stop the video.